Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is Amy Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's the wrong paper, sorry. My name is Jorge Alberto Millán España. I'm here covering for Amy Ronfield, uh, who recently took a job with the city of San Antonio. Uh, first of all, let me get my usual water. If I talk without water, it's like having kryptonite. At the end of the presentation, I'll be talking like this. So anyway, before I start, I wanted to give a little disclaimer about this, <clears throat> excuse me, this presentation. I inherited the uh, title of this presentation. Uh, I didn't, I had to p build the presentation from scratch. Um, and to be quite honest with you, if I had the chance to change anything, I would have added, why do I need a hydraulic analysis? I'm not changing anything. I would have added, yes, you are. You are actually changing something. So I hope my presentation answers the question that you all might have right now about why do you need a hydraulic analysis? If it doesn't, please contact me, send me an email. We can talk one-to-one. -one. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, today, we basically what I put together, we're going to talk a little bit about overlay and seal code, connecting to existing systems, uh, bridge rail, some FEMA issues, uh, a free pass on hydraulics, which is awesome to some designers, and then some uh, conclusions. All right, so overlay and seal coat, but it's only two inches. So some people, um, you know, uh, in this specific case, we have, you know, they, we have a little house here up the hill. We have a, a roadway. And through the years, Texas has come and added seal coat, you know, and then, you know, before then, the water will be right here. House is good, nothing happens. You add two inches of seal coat, or up to, or, you know, okay. Now the water is here. And then another year to come and you add another layer of seal code and another one. And next thing you know, you have added enough seal code to the road that now you're actually, uh, the water elevation is actually hitting that house right there. And according to floodsmart.gov, it costs about $10,000 uh, per uh, 1,000 square feet of construction flooded with only one inch of water. And uh, if it goes all the way to the six, six inches, then, you know, that cost doubles. Um, and this problem is easily uh, fixable by milling. So the, some people ask us, hey, all we're doing is doing an overlay. Uh, do we have to do a hydraulic analysis? Well, not necessarily, not really. But if you, but you might have to. Is if you, if you're milling before you're overlaying, then you don't, you basically you don't have a problem. But if you don't, then you have this type of problem, and then you have to answer to the stakeholders about the damage in their houses. And I have seen this. I've been in the field, and I've seen not necessarily on bridges, but I've seen uh, guardrails that were supposed to be at 28 inches standard from years ago, and we measure them, and they're like at 18, because you know layers and layers and layers of. Uh, those problems have been fixed now, but, I, but, you know, it happens. All right, another issue sometimes we see uh, uh, some designers designing a, uh, uh, um, a drainage system, and they simply say, well, we're just dumping the water there. I don't really need to uh, uh, analyze the existing system. So let's say we have a creek here, and the department, the highway department comes and builds a road, uh, and the water used to naturally go down to the creek. Now we have to build a storm sewer or whatnot to collect all this water and make it in, down here into the creek. Okay, all good. That's the existing system. Years later, the highway department, um, text dot, <laughs> uh, decides to build another road. And we have the same issue, the same problem. The water used to collect this way, and for whatever reason, the designer decides to connect to the existing system right about there, right there over there. Um, and then what happens is, if this is the existing system and the previous um, designer made an assumption, he assumed the water in the creek will be at a certain event down here, then it rains, the water is collected through your system, and then the HGL or the hydraulic gray line inside the pipe behaves this way. Everything's good, you take those plans, you see that, you decide to tie it in right here, 
and uh, you can make one or two assumption, assumptions. If you're a horrible designer, you might assume that the water simply free flows out of the pipe, which will be a horrible mistake because now your HDL looks like that and it's probably nothing like that. If you are an okay designer, an okay engineer, an acceptable engineer, let's put it that way, you trust the previous engineer and assume that the water is where the engineer, the previous engineer said it was, which will be, you know, the pipe is flowing half full or half empty if you're a pessimist. And then your HDL will look like that. Now what happens, we're all humans, we make mistakes. What happens if the previous engineer made a mistake and his assumption was completely off and the water was actually way up here? Well, now not only his system is failing because now you have water coming out of the inlets over here, but now guess what? Your system is also messed up because your assumptions are wrong. And now if you have your pipe, your HDL, it's gonna look like that. And if you have inlets, at those locations, then you might have a problem. Um, I have three quick videos I wanted to show you, and I wanted to ask the person to please mute that. Make sure it's muted, please. Please go ahead and play. Oh, I clicked. Oh, okay. As you can see, this is an inlet that is already failing. Um, this is like the you know very first phase of failing. It's barely failing just now. The second video, this is a little more critical. I click on it, you say? Okay, okay, there you go. As you can see, the water is just, you know, this is what I call like a mid area of mid problem, like we had the lower, and uh, this is what I like, the next one is what I like calling the geyser, is that you say it in English? The geyser situation, so please. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm gonna play this video a little longer because like in two and a half minutes, it's insane. I don't know if you can fast forward that, like, no, you can't, all right. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is, if you're a designer, if you're an engineer, and you're connecting to an existing system, remember this guy. You know, if you make the wrong assumptions, <laughs> if you make the wrong assumptions when you design your storm uh, drainage system, this guy is not gonna be happy. And I'm gonna play like 20 more seconds because he's insane, look, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> oh my God. So. I hope the cross, the point is coming across to you all. Please, if you are connecting to an existing system, check, make, make sure you use your own design uh, and you evaluate, you do, I would strongly recommend a hydraulic analysis. Excuse me, I'm about to start talking funny. All right, another situation. Sometimes when people are designing bridges, we're only installing or replacing the bridge rail. We don't need a hydraulic analysis. Why do I need that? Well, same guy, uh, somehow his road became a bridge now, and he's up the hill here, and you know, you have the, a creek running down uh, um, under the bridge. There is an event, a storm event, thunder, everything, and then all of a sudden the water surface elevation uh, reaches and overtops the bridge. Well, this guy happens to have a lot of hay in his um, property and that, you know, gets washed out by the creek. And it's good. Everything is good. Just goes over the, uh, over the bridge and the guy, we have a happy stakeholder. Well, what happens if you install the bridge rail, uh, it looks something like that. And now, same situation, storm, lightning, rains, and the water surface elevation reaches the top of the bridge, it passes the, the rail, because the rail is designed to let water pass, but it's not necessarily designed to let um, debris pass through. And now we have this situation. And now the water is gonna continue increasing the elevation, and now we have a not so happy stakeholder. Excuse me, and you might say, no, that never happens, Jorge, I've never seen anything like that. It does happen, and it does happen, and believe me, water is not gonna be able to go through there. I mean, maybe like a little bit, but that water right there is gonna, it's gonna go over the debris. And now your design that said the water surface, of the, the wall basically at the bridge was down here at the deck, that's not true. So I strongly, we strongly recommend y'all when you design a bridge rail, that you design it 
completely blocked, okay? Like it's like a wall. That's like the, remember the, 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 the lower engineer, the okay engineer? Be the high engineer, be the awesome engineer, you know? The guy who designs that completely blocked. That way you, you've been a little, you know, you've been conservative, it's true, but it's better than getting this guy angry right there. All right, and I think I have one more thing. Yes, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> FEMA issues. Uh, why do I need to notify the floodplain of FPA? FPA stands for flood, floodplain administrator. It's less than the one foot increase. Well, FEMA has a regulation that as long as you are not increasing the water surface elevation more than one feet, you are okay. Um, the thing is, um, first of all, the local floodplain administrator, he's your friend. And I'll tell you a story in a minute so you understand what I mean by this. So one thing you need to remember, this one foot increase is cumulative. Uh, the problem is, and I think I might have, I don't have the guy here, I don't have the, the, the angry stakeholder anymore, but similar to the um, previous seal code example, if you have an engineer who designs, makes a change in the floodplain, and this increases, you know, 0.2 feet, and then the other one over there increase, increases 0.6, and right there over there, another guy increases 0.6, another one. Next thing you know, you are way above the one foot. And if they don't talk to each other, and if it's different through the years, then you have gone way over this, and that is definitely a problem. The floodplain administrator's job, uh, I understand part of his job, or his, her job, is to keep track of all this stuff. And uh, I'm sorry if there is any FPAs here, because I'm going to be sending like a lot of... <laughs> A lot of people, after this presentation, they'll be sending you a lot of stuff, and you'll see why. Um, so we strongly recommend to coordinate, uh, informally coordinate, with the local flood floodplain administrator for any project that is in any zone, in, in any FEMA zone, A, X, whatever you want to call it. Um, be, and by informally coordinating, we mean send them a copy of the plan set with a little letter that says, we're doing this just for your information. And that's it, you don't need, they don't need to, uh, you know, they don't need to send you anything back, a receipt that they got it, simply you have it, good, that's what we call informal coordination. Now, oh, I do have the angry guy, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a story, this is a true story, I don't know when or where, and I know that sounds kind of shady, but um, it, it, <laughs> it is a true story that happened here at TechStot. We had a stakeholder who, um, during the years, I think it was about over seven years, uh, he kind of like this similar situation, just upstream of a, uh, a crossing. And during some time, he observed TxDOT people uh, coming to work on the bridge. You know, and you know, people, trucks, and you know, and he probably from looking at them from, from way up there, you know, those TxDOT people, what are they doing to the bridge, you know? And they didn't come once or twice, they came three times in about seven years. You know, so the guys were there, he couldn't see exactly what they were doing, but they were doing something to that bridge. Seven years passed by, it rained and stuff, and next thing you know, guess what? He got flooded. Uh, he, was, he was angry, and I don't remember which district it was. <laughs> probably some of you are sitting here remember this, but he, this person went to the district office, he probably yelled at somebody, at the area engineer, who knows what, and, Obviously, we as TechStot, we're, you know, we need to serve the stake, stakeholders, stake, must, must be close to lunchtime, sorry, stakeholders. <laughs> and uh, it, so the people in the district took, you know, time and maybe weeks and months trying to figure out what on earth we did in the last seven years that affected this guy. So does, anyone, does anybody want to take a guess on what we did on that bridge that made that guy flooded? Hmm? <laughs> close, close, Michelle, but not quite. We painted the, road, the bridge. That was a really thick paint that we had to apply to that bridge to flood this guy. The point I'm trying to make here is if the engineer or the designer, this is a painting job. This is not, not design, not even the inspection. They were just painting the bridge, maybe just the, the rail. But if they would have, and this might sound silly to y'all, but if you're painting a bridge and you have a plan set for that, 
uh, or if you have some kind of letter that you can notify the FPA, the FPA, the floodplain administrator, he's, he's our friend. He's a filter. The people, the stakeholders will go to them before they come to us. Because usually it's people from their own community, you know, they see them as friends, while we are the state, and I guess they don't like us that much, I guess, I don't know. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is, if the FPA would have known, person, angry stakeholder goes to him, hey, they've been working the last seven years, what, what do you know what they've done? Oh, oh right here, they've, they've, all they've done is painting. Oh, okay, well, I guess I don't, and they probably, you know, would have been done with that. We wouldn't have never heard from this guy. So, oh, the last thing, ooh. I was, okay, the free pass on hydraulics. Basically, this comes directly from the new chief uh, hydraulic engineer, Stan Hoffey. Um, if you have, if you follow this, uh, the following five conditions, the five following conditions must be documented in a plan set to avoid the hydraulic documentation. So I guess this is when I don't need a hydraulic analysis. Well, if you have these five things, then you don't need the, your, the hydraulic analysis. This might be the most important uh, slide on my presentation. So if it's minor modifications, it's low ADTs, there is no adverse impact to a properties due to backwater effect or velocities, there is no change in profile, and finally, a history of past performance is adequate. If you have these five things in your plan set, then you can safely state we do not need a hydraulic analysis. That, I mean, it will come through Austin, and we have to review it, and we see these five things, and we'll give you, you know, thumbs up, you're good to go, move on with your life, I have other stuff to do, you know? So, but if you're in a zone AE, you should analyze this. You definitely should analyze this, no matter what. And again, you might be painting the bridge, and you, you don't might need to do hydraulic analysis, but you have to have some, some kind of, um, you acknowledge the fact that you are within the this, uh, this on AE, and always contact the flood plan administrator. Last, um, make sure to pull the FEMA maps from each, each crossing and check and make sure that you are, you're good. All right, I'll leave you with this. Oh, two minutes. Uh, remember, just because you might not need a hydraulic analysis does not mean that it wouldn't be a good idea to have one. Remember, low engineer, medium, awesome. All right, be the awesome engineer. Use your best engineering judgment. Remember, the local floodplain administrator uh, is your friend and always informally coordinate with him or her, regardless. And finally, when in doubt, ask yourself, WW jammed. For all, those of you that, don't know, that, that doesn't know what that means, is what would Jorge Alberto Millán España do? All right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you have any questions?